What's shaking Navigation Nation? What a crazy and wild October, and it's not even Halloween yet. Uh, before we jump into the alerts, I just want to give a little bit of my thoughts and kind of perspective on where we're at in the markets. Uh, we're, we're looking at a chart right now of the S&P 500, and this, this red line represents uh, January 1st. So this is where the market started at the beginning of the year, going back to the going back to the first first trading day of the year. And so if you see where we're at now, you can see we just broke through that the last couple of days. And not that there's any significance to that level or trend line or anything like that. It's it's really just a, a the, the reason I point that out is because think about this. If you were invested in index funds like many people are in their 401k or IRAs or just the way that they invest, they're they're down on the year. They're down money if they are just simply invested in the S and P 500. Our portfolio is up over 40 percent year to date, and so I point that out because that's, that's just the power of the strategies that we use and the methodologies that we teach. And and so to put that in perspective, you know what a huge difference that is on a rate of return. If you have a hundred thousand dollars, that's forty thousand dollars. If you have a million dollar account, that's four hundred thousand dollars. And we have, we have a lot of members trading with some really large accounts. And then, of course, we have a lot of members trading with smaller accounts, too. And so those numbers aren't as big. But if you look at it from a percentage standpoint, I mean, that it, it's, it can be such a life-changing uh, thing to learn how to trade this. And it's a life skill. So if, if any of you are, are frustrated or you're just starting to get into this, uh, you know, stick with it. it. It's well worth it. It's a life skill that you're going to have forever that you can pass on uh, for, for generations. So stick with it. It's exciting times here. Uh, you know, our, our portfolio has continued to hit new all-time P&L highs. It did again today. And uh, it, it's a wild ride, but man, this is when trading is the most fun. You know, in, in 2017, when the market was just grinding higher, implied volatility was low. It was a one-directional move. We made money, but it was one of the most difficult trading time frames that you can that you can trade in because it's one directional and implied volatility is low. Right now we're having massive two-sided action, plus implied volatility is high in almost everything. And so you can simply sell premium and continue to manage your positions like we teach. And it just, it's, it's so much fun. So I hope, I hope everybody else is having fun out there. I know a lot of our members, I hear from a lot of our members. I know they are as well. So let's hope this keeps it up. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out here before we jump into the alerts is a little bit of perspective on where we at, where we are uh, from a, just from an overall market, uh, kind of a more of a historical standpoint. Let's look at a 10-year chart and let's change this from daily charts to a monthly and the reason I want to show you this is, is look at this. Um, I'm going to narrow it down a little bit more. So this is 10 years. So this is going all the way back to 2008. And this is where we are today. This is a one month bar. And I mean, if you look at it from this perspective, this October that we're having, this one month, which is a big down month for sure. But overall, look at this. I mean, this is just a little blip on the overall massive run that we've had. So I'm not making any prediction that we have, you know, that we could go, you know, much, much lower, but the reality is we could. And, you know, you're going to get all kinds of people on CNBC and these news channels making predictions about where we're going. And I want to encourage you to not listen to that. I mean, you know what I think about opinions. They are just, they don't, their opinion does not matter. The most important thing to do is to stay strategic and stay mechanical. And that's exactly what we do at Navigation Trading. We're using probabilities, statistics to, to, to manage these positions. And we're not, we're not trying to guess where the market's going to go. And, and, and you don't have to to make money. And that's the, that's the key point. So having said that, let's jump into the alerts for the week, starting with Monday, and the first alert that I sent out was a was a corrective alert because 
after I did the, the weekly video last Friday, I noticed that um, uh, one of our alerts, so the, the, the alert right here in forward slash 6E, this was, this was a closing trade that we, that we posted on the 11th uh, back on October 11th. And let me just get to that so I can show you what I mean uh, right here. So we closed this out and booked, booked around 40% of max profit in just 14 days. The problem is uh, we, it didn't save correctly in our system, and so the alert never went out. So I had to go back and, and post it here in chronological order. And so the first thing Monday morning that I did was sent out this corrective alert just to let you know that we had closed it out. Now, thankfully, uh, I got uh, feedback from, from several members saying that they, they actually got filled at better prices than we did, uh, because of that situation, but uh, the reality is uh, that's only happened one other time, and we caught it right away. So this one, uh, this one went a little while before we did catch it, but thankfully, hopefully, it worked out in your benefit. And so we were we were out of six E at that point. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in SMH. So we added a short strangle in SMH in the December cycle. Applied volatility at that point was up to eighty eight. And uh, let's go to SMH on the charts. You can kind of see it's falling along with everything else at this point. If we take a look at our Analyze tab, here is the alert that I just sent out. And let me reset these so I can check the correct boxes. I'm not sure why TOS does that, but it's part of the deal. So here's this one. So you can see implied volatility has gone up significantly since then. So, so you can see this trade is down some, but it's still well within our range. We just need some implied volatility to contract, price to kind of sta stabilize a little bit. And then we've got this other piece as well, which is an adjusted strangle, which is actually a, a straddle at that 99 strike. You can see price is down here in the lower end of the range. If it, mo if it moves too much further, Let's take a look at how much premium we have left in the calls. See, we still have a lot left. We're not even at 50% of the max profit on the call side. So it's going to have to move significantly lower before we make an adjustment to that piece. And we're already, we're, we're in December, which has 56 days till expiration. So we got a ton of time before we would do anything there. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in gold, forward slash GC. And what we did here is price had breached the upside, so we we were simply rolling our puts. And uh, with the December options still having 35 days to expiration, we simply stayed in December and simply rolled up our untested side, which in this case was our puts. So if we take a look at gold, you can see price is still well within our range here. Let me spread this out so you can see it. You can see price is right here, so we're just waiting for some more theta to decay and time to pass. And then we'll either roll or close this depending on the situation. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in the QQQs. So we rolled one set of our short call verticals from November to December. At that point, we were well over 50% of max profit. So we wanted to roll closer down to price, uh, collect some more credit. And then, uh, as I mentioned, we were still holding our other uh, set of short call verticals in the Qs. So let's take a look at where they're at at this point. Big move down today, of course, 2.5% down at this point. Uh, the market still has another hour, a little over an hour before it closes. Uh, so who knows what can happen with the volatility we're seeing. But here's one of the short call verticals. Uh, we're up a little bit on that one. And then the other one, a uh, pretty similar situation. We're up a little bit, but uh, just holding on to those for that continued short delta exposure in our portfolio. And based, uh, specific to short delta, let me, let me address that. With this huge down move that we've been seeing, it sucked away a lot of our short delta. And I've been getting a lot of questions about this from members. And, and you know, I got a couple today even saying, you know, what should we do? Should we add some short delta? And my answer is no. Uh, and the reason is, is because I don't like adding on short positions when the market's down huge, right? I want to, I'm going to wait for a bounce and, and there's no, there's not, there's nothing that says we're going to get that bounce, but I'd rather wait for a bounce and then start adding in some more short delta. Where we're at right now with our overall portfolio is we actually have a little bit of long delta. 
And we haven't had that in a long time. And I'm not going to lie. It makes me feel a little dirty, makes me feel a little naked, a little vulnerable not to have that short delta on. But, you know, with this with this massive move down that we've seen, you know, there is a potential that we are a little bit oversold in the short term. And if we if we do get a bounce, A, that's going to help our portfolio. But B, it'll give us the opportunity to add on some short delta, uh, which we like to have. So, you know, we as I always say, we like to be in that one to one to five to one range on our short delta to theta ratio right now. You know, we have about we have about 300 and some dollars in theta, but we have long delta of about $100. So we're actually below that one to one uh, where I like to be. But I, I'm, I'm kind of OK with that right now just because we we have seen such a sell off uh, and we may be a little bit uh, oversold in the short term. Now, this thing keeps going down heavily. You know, we are going to we are going to uh, feel that pain. But uh but there will also be high implied volatility, great opportunity to be putting on new positions. So I'm not that worried about it at this point. And hopefully the market cooperates. We'll see. Um, next trade was uh, another rolling adjusting trade. This one in SMH. I already showed that. We rolled that from November to December. There was only 24 days left in November. So you know, we, once we get down to 21 days, we like to be rolled out of those uh, short strangles. So at this point, with 24, I didn't want to stay in November and then a few days later roll again. So we, we simply just rolled that, and now we have the, the 99 um, strike uh, straddle, which I just showed you on the platform. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in DIA. Of course, a lot of rolling adjusting trades that are that were working in our favor. So another one here in DIA where we had some short call verticals, well over 50% uh, of max profit on that piece of the trade. So we moved our strikes closer to the current price and went ahead and kept that on for that short delta exposure in our portfolio. And let's go ahead and look at DIA on the platform. So we've got two sets of short call verticals, very, very similar, very close to each other. And we're up a little bit with the down move on both of these. Uh, so we're just holding these. Again, these were originally part of our iron condor trade. And then we've just been rolling them for the last several cycles to keep that short delta exposure that we needed anyway. And so we're just holding on to these and, and looking for downside, more downside to benefit those pieces. Next trade was an opening trade in XRT, so IV percentile, very high like it is in pretty much everything right now. So we're just kind of picking and choosing different symbols to sell more premium. And, 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 and remember, you don't want to load up, just because implied volatility is high, you don't want to load up all one day. You still want to spread those out over time uh, to get that exposure as price and volatility and expiration continue to move around. Excuse me. We want to uh, we want to spread that out. So in this case, we uh, chose to add one to XRT because we didn't have a position there. So if we take a look at XRT, implied volatility has gone up since then. So another situation where we're actually down slightly on the trade, but still well within our range. So nothing to do here except for wait. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in wheat. So we added an iron condor on in wheat in the January cycle. Can't believe we're already adding January positions, but that is the case with 58 days to expiration. So we've got two different iron condors on in wheat. This is the one we just added. You can see price is still very centered there. And then our other one is uh, price was way down here, almost to a point of adjustment, uh, but Wheat came ripping back today up over three and a half percent. And so we're well back into range up a little bit. Could use a little bit more upside. And if we do get that, we'll book a winner on this piece and we'll still continue to hold our January position and wait for some more decay there as well. Next trade was a closing trade in RH. So this is one that we had put on for that short delta exposure. It was a long put vertical. Uh, price came down nicely. We booked over 50% of max profit on that one. So good trade there. We did take a little bit of heat. Uh, in fact, I had some members you know, saying, hey, should we get out of this? It's going against us. And no, you got to let the probabilities play out. 
Uh, but basically, we got in right here. They announced a big stock buyback. The, the, price of, uh, the price shot up. We looked at it as an opportunity to get short, to uh, get some short delta exposure in our portfolio. It went up for the next three days. Uh, so we were, we were losing money on the trade, but then it rolled over, turned around with the rest of the market and, uh, came down nicely. And we were able to book a, book a good profit in that one. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in IWM. So this was a short put vertical that had, uh, the price had, you know, smashed through the break even. We took off the untested side and we were just kind of holding it, seeing if we got a bounce back. Uh, it, it got way down out of range, very low probability of coming back into range. And there's still a decent amount of premium left in the options. So instead of holding them and letting that decay away, you know, some of that, some of that, uh, additional theta, we went ahead and just closed it out. It was a, it was a long Delta piece. We didn't want, uh, at that time we we're trying to help balance our portfolio. So we got rid of some of that long Delta that that piece had, and then we're still holding, this, uh, this other iron condor, which is right here. So price still well within the range. If it continues lower past the break even, we'll do the same thing. We'll close out the untested side, maybe add a new centered iron condor, but for now, nothing to do except for wait. Next trade was an opening trade in EWW. So again, the next day, just adding some more short premium. In this case, we sold a strangle in EWW, the Mexican ETF. And so if we look at that, again, still very centered, just waiting for some theta to decay, for some time to pass. You can see the IV percentile, IV rank, very high, just like it is in a lot of these symbols. And, and by the way, one, one other note I want to mention about this is notice that we are in the thick of earnings season, but we have traded no earnings trades. And the reason is, is when you have high implied volatility, in all these different ETFs and underlines, and you have all these all this opportunity, there's really no reason to be trading earnings trades. Now, if you wanted to play some earning trades, I, I don't have anything against that, but I'm saying for our alerts portfolio and for the capital that we want to use, I'd much rather use that money on our core premium selling strategies than I would on earnings trades because they're not as high a probability of trades. And so if implied volatility is low, you know, that, that's when you'll see us really load up and, and do a lot more earnings trades like we have in the past. But right now, I'd rather use that capital on these higher probability of short, short premium plays. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in the queues. So I already went over that on the platform, but just another one of these where we rolled from November to December, adjusted our strikes down from 178, 183 down to 172, 177 extended duration on that trade and to keep that short delta in our portfolio. Next trade was another rolling adjusting trade in DIA. Uh, I, I did get some questions on this because this is kind of confusing. Because we just stayed in the December cycle and we didn't roll out, the way that TOS displays this order is it says Condor. Don't pay attention to that. Just understand what we're really doing. We're simply just buying back our strikes here, moving them down, and staying in the same cycle, in this case, uh, December. So we're at over 50% of max profit, so we're just rolling those down closer to price, collecting that, you know, booking that credit, and, uh, and moving on there. So that's what we did on DIA. And then today on ES, we had, we have, for our iron condor trade, we had uh, two sets of short call verticals. And so with, with, with the big move down today, uh, we simply closed this one out. We were over 50% of max profit. And so we just went ahead and booked this. And then the very next trade, the market moved down even more. So we took off our other short call vertical. Now this did take away some of the short delta that we had in our portfolio and now has caused us to have, like I mentioned, a little bit of long delta. But I just figured, you know, we've been in this ES iron condor for quite a while, managing and adjusting, and, and we were able to get out of it and book a really nice profit. So I just I just took the took advantage of this down move. And and like I said, if we get a little bit of a, a rip higher in the market, that's that's really gonna benefit us by doing that. We'll see what happens, but that's kind of the uh, that's kind of the thought process behind that. Um, 
So, so we're completely out of the ES Iron Condor. Booked a really nice winner. Let's go to the closed trades. To sh I'll show you. Um, and if we look here, oh, well, that's not right. That was, I need to change that. That was our TLT Iron Condor. Uh, anyway, this was our ES Iron Condor. You can see how long, how many adjustments and rolls. We were in this for quite a while. But by staying mechanical, continuing to roll that short delta, we booked a profit of over $1,600 on the trade. And, and again, that's just the power of just staying mechanical, stick with the program. You know, up here, when the, when the market was just grinding higher, you know, these, these short delta positions were, were working against us. They were a drag on our performance. Uh, and then when it turned, you know, it just, it just completely gave us, gave us back all that profit and a lot more. So that is why we do what we do. And I'll make sure I get this changed because this was uh, a later alert that I'll go over here in just a second. So let's go back to the alerts here. And um, and so that was that one. So yeah, that was the uh, that was the yeah, the next one was the same thing. We were, we were, we took off that last short call vertical in the ES Iron Condor trade, booked that profit, and then the next trade was in SPY. We haven't been in SPY in quite a while, and I don't like that because it's the most liquid symbol out there. But the reason is, is because we had these positions on in ES and, and IWM and QQQ and all these different related symbols, and I don't want to overload in one asset class. And so there was just no room for additional short premium in these symbols. But after we got rid of this ES uh, with implied volatility continuing to spike today, we sold some premium in SPY. In this case, we did a strangle. Now, if, if you were in an IRA or you wanted to find risk, I mentioned you could also do an iron condor and define that risk. SPY is plenty big of a symbol. You get plenty of credit to do so. We just chose to do a short strangle. So let's take a look at SPY. And we're still very centered. We just put this one on today. So no profit or loss. So we're just waiting for some theta to decay, some time to pass there. And, uh, and, and, and look at this market as we're talking now. Now the S&Ps are down 41. We've got a little under an hour to go before the market closes. Uh, next trade and the last trade was a, a closing trade in TLT. So we had an iron condor on. TLT made a nice move up today. We booked over 30% of max profit on that trade. And I mentioned that, you know, with implied volatility so high, we are going to look to re-enter that trade next week, either in TLT or we might look at notes or bonds. I really like trading the notes. They're a good size. They're a little bit bigger than TLT, but they're not as big as ZB. So we'll probably look to sell some premium in the notes uh, next week. So look for that early next week. Uh, and then that, and, and so that TLT, that was the, that was the one I just showed you here, that closed trade booked $156. Uh, and I'll make sure I change that to TLT because that's incorrect there. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of our other positions, uh, starting with forward slash six B, which is the British pound. We've got a short strangle on here where you can see prices right here, no profit or loss. We could use a little bit of an up move, some more time to pass, some more theta to decay before we do anything there. And then our good friend oil, we've got a short strangle on in oil. And you can see price is pretty centered in that trade there. So same thing, waiting for some more time to pass before we do anything there. In ES, I mentioned we got out of our, completely got out of our iron condor trade but we still have our long put vertical, which is right here. And you can see we, we were up a little bit since we've, since we've uh, done anything with this. So just holding this for, for that short delta exposure in our portfolio. Nothing else to do at this point. In gold, I mentioned that one. Natty gas. Okay, so nat gas, we've got two pieces to this trade on. Uh, the first is this short strangle, and this came in nicely today. Uh, this has been a little bit of a wild ride, but price has come back into center. We're up some money on this one, but just waiting for some more profit before we take that off. And then this other piece is an adjusted strangle where you can see price is, is right here. Could use a little bit more downside before we do anything there. And if we get that, then we'll, we'll look to book that profit uh, uh, sometime in the near future as well. 
Wheat, I already mentioned that one. Apple, so we've got this long put vertical here that we were holding for that short delta. You can see prices right here. We've got a little bit of profit there. We're actually, we're still down on the Apple trade because it just was, it just kept going up and up and up forever. And we were, we were short it, but uh, starting to make our way back and we could use a little bit more downside in Apple to benefit that one. DIA, I mentioned that. EEM. So we've got two pieces to our EEM trade. And uh, let's look at this one first. So this is a, a short strangle. You can see price is still very centered in that one. And then we've got this other adjusted strangle, which you can see here. So could use a little bit of upside movement in EEM uh, to benefit that, but just waiting for some more theta to decay there. And, and again, just like everything else, EEM has been going down in price and implied volatility is up in its upper range in the 90s. So great time to be selling premium there. EWW, mentioned that one. We've got a short strangle on an EWW. Same thing in EWZ. We've got some short premium there. Price is very centered. Just waiting for some more time to pass. FXI. So we've got two butterfly spreads on here. This is our Put butterfly, you can see we got some profit there, but just uh, looking for some more before we take that off. And then our call butterfly is out of range, but we're just seeing if we can get a bounce back there. It's, just, it's helping balance our portfolio with, with some of that long delta. So not ready to take that off yet, but just waiting to see what happens there. IWM, I mentioned that one. IYR. So this is the real estate ETF. We've got two pieces on here. The first is this iron condor, kind of a tight iron condor with these strikes a little bit closer to price just to collect enough credit to make it worthwhile. Uh, you can see price is dead centered here. Nothing, nothing to do at this point. And then we've got this short put vertical that was originally part of an iron condor. Price came through and breached our break even debt to the downside. So we closed out the untested side. Now we're just looking for a little bit of upside in IYR to benefit that piece. I mentioned the Qs, I mentioned SMH, I mentioned SPY, VXX. Okay, so this one is the strategy that we teach in our VIX course uh, in selling a short call vertical. In this case, I mean, obviously with stocks going down, the price of VXX has spiked higher, putting us in a, in a losing position here. We're just going to continue to hold this. This this could really change very quickly with a contraction in implied volatility. The other thing is, into next, I didn't want to do it today or this week, but into next week, if the price of this continues to go higher up into this kind of, let's say, 44-ish range, which means stocks are continuing to go lower, we will look to add another one on here and, and, and do another one of these. We're not going to let this be a full loser, uh, but we will. Uh, so we may have to close this out, take a loss, and move on. But we but look for a potential add-on to this uh, to, uh, to uh, do another short call vertical in VXX. XLK, we have this long put vertical on that we have on for short delta exposure. And price moving down here, almost about 2.5% today. So we're close to, uh, we'll probably roll this one to continue to keep that short delta. Uh, we've, we've got a nice little profit on this piece. Uh, we're still down a little bit on the trade overall, so we'll probably extend duration. And it keeps that short delta in our portfolio. And then lastly, XRT, which I already went over as well. So those are all the trades. Those are all the positions. Hope everybody has a great weekend, and we'll talk to you next week.